Hi, uh, this is Amit Kirti here. In this video, I would like to talk about for loop in C and C++. So the topics of uh, discussion are introduction, looping structure flowchart, introduction and interesting examples, backus nor form explanation, and backus nor form for for loop. Now, for loop is actually a looping structure in C or C++. So for loop is used to loop through a set of instructions multiple times. For example, you may have an instruction to open a file and read each line of the file till you actually end up to the end of the file. So for to do such things, you will have to repeatedly read each line from the file. So such things can be done using for loop. So on the left hand side you see the for loop logic where you have an initial condition so if the initial condition is true then it will go down and execute the body of the loop and then it goes up and checks the initial condition or rather the condition and if the condition is successful it will again execute the body of the for loop this goes on till the condition fails and then if the condition fails it will come out of the block for for loop and go out on the right hand side we have a simple code in c for for loop so we have an variable called i so there are three parts in a for loop generally this is called as initialization this is the checking condition and this is the increment operator so here i have the initialization where I have initialized the value of i to 0. Here I check whether i is less than 10 and I increment the variable. So how does this program go about? So first when, when it enters the for loop it checks whether i it assigns i equal to 0. Then it will check whether i is less than 10 and it will go and print hello world. It goes up increments the value of i and checks whether i is less than 10 if yes then it goes and prints hello world again it will go up increment i again and check again i is less than 10 so this process keeps on repeating till the value of i is less than 10 as soon as it goes greater than 10 this for loop is exited and it comes out and returns back so the condition that we are referring to here is is this condition where i is less than 10 so till this condition holds good this particular print statement executes so in this flowchart i have not shown the increment operator that is i plus plus which is implicit so in the uh, in the for loop code after the code gets executed when you are returning back here the i plus plus happens and the condition is checked and if it is true then it enters the for loop again Now let's try to look at some interesting examples. So in this example what I have done is I have skipped this first step that is initialization step and I have moved it here. So can I do something like this? Is it possible to just have this part of the for loop blank and initialize it up? Uh, the second thing that I am trying to ponder about is can I bring that int i equal to 0 inside here? Previously we used to just set i equal to 0. So can I initialize a variable, declare and initialize it here itself, say int i equal to 0. So declaration, can it be done inside the for loop? The third thing that I am trying to ponder is, can I initialize two variables like this? So here I have i equal to 0 and j equal to 0. I am trying to initialize i as 2 and j as 9. And I have two variables in the checking part that is i is less than 10 and j is less than 15. Can I do something like this? And can I increment two variables? Can I do i++ plus plus and j++? Plus plus? So can I have multiple expressions in each of these three parts of for loop? Then the fourth thing that I am trying to ponder is, can I just leave everything blank? 
can can i just leave these three black and blank and will it compile so these these are some of the things that i'm trying to ponder to answer these questions um, we should actually see what the designers of the language thought about for the for loop so in order to understand that we have to understand what is a bacchus nor form so bacchus nor form is a set of notations used to describe context free grammars bacchus nor form is generally used to describe natural languages that we use in our day to day life like english and bacchus nor form is also used for to describe programming languages like c and c++ for example if i have to write name of a person in the form of a uh, uh, generic uh, syntax then how do i do that for example if i have i can have names like professor albert einstein or martin luther king junior or some people's name could be w a mozart so three different ways of writing a name of a person so how do i generically write the name of a person so i can represent it as in the form of a bacchus nor form as shown here so the name of a person could have an optional prefix part his personal part the last name part optional suffix part now the optional prefix part could be mr doctor professor or nothing the personal part could be just the first name or initial with a dot or initial with a dot and a personal part keeps repeating then optional suffix part could be senior junior or some roman number or nothing so for example for the first one that is professor albert einstein i have an optional prefix part i have a personal part i have a last name but i don't have an optional suffix part whereas in case of martin luther king junior i i don't have a prefix part i have a personal part that is martin luther i have the last name say king and i have an optional suffix part which happens to be junior and in this case i don't have a prefix i don't have a suffix the name part actually has initial and a dot so w a happens to be the initial for the personal part and then <clears throat> i have the last name as moza so this is a, uh, this is a representation of a of a name of a person which is a bacchus nor form so if you look at the bacchus nor form for the for statement it just says for open bracket it should be an expression which is not really necessary followed by a semicolon another expression which is really not necessary followed by a semicolon and a third expression and then closing bracket and the for loop statement so this is all is the expression for for loop so what does this actually mean it means that anything that evaluates to a number can be put in the as a for condition so here it should evaluate to some number here it should evaluate to some number here it should evaluate to some number and you can leave this blank so leaving any of these or all of these as blank is also valid so what basically it means is that this can be an expression this can be an expression this can be an expression so we have looked at four different things so for example this can be left blank as per our previous understanding so this is a perfectly valid statement so i can initialize the variable up and leave this blank for the second example there are multiple possibilities initially when c was designed you could you had to initialize all the variables at the beginning of a function so you had to initialize i equal to yeah, declare i int i here at the beginning of the program but then uh, as the language improved progress the the spec was changed to uh, add i initialization inside for loop as well so some compilers may allow you to do this and some may not so the later compilers which are c++ compilers which you can use to compile c programs like g++ or gcc might allow you to do this in fact g++ will allow you to do this but for gcc you will have to add additional flag like c99 so in, when you compile your program you have to add minus c99 so that this program compiles so this the initially the c did not allow this but 
currently you can do this so this is also fine now multiple expressions as i said this forms a statement the comma separated values finally ending with a semicolon and become an expression so this particular thing can be done this also can be done and this also can be done so this again is a perfectly valid code since this particular thing is an expression i equal to 2 comma j equal to 9 is an expression i less than 10 j less than 15 is an expression i plus plus and j plus plus is an expression so you can actually do this now as i was saying an expression need not be present so in either of the three places expression can be omitted and this particular piece of code will compile and execute so this is a perfectly valid code so in this case the fourth um, example what will happen is for will start acting like an infinite loop so if you run this program this program will keep on printing no condition no condition no condition all the way till infinity since we did not specify a condition to stop the for loop the for loop will never stop so this acts as an infinite loop so if you want to do anything in your program which should run in for an infinite amount of time then you can use a for loop without any expressions in either of the three places in fact you have a couple of more interesting examples you can do something like this as well you can have a printf statement at the beginning which which would get printed as soon as you enter the for loop so if you run this program it will first print think aloud academy and then it will print printing inside for loop so you can use printf inside for loop as well another complex example is you can open do an f open and you can do an f write or f printf inside the for loop itself so this again is a perfectly valid code uh, where in the initial part of the for loop i do an f open to open a particular file and assign a file pointer to it and in the second part of the code i actually use the file pointer and write this particular line of code and in the third line i will increment the i and i just have a semicolon so what this particular piece of code would do is initial initialization statement will open the file the checking condition every time will check whether i is less than 10 and if it is less than 10 it will print i is percentage d into this file and this will keep incrementing so if i is equal to 0 so if you op uh, if you open this file after the code gets executed you will see that I, it prints i is 1, i is 2, i is 3, i is 4, so on till i is 9. So this particular for loop doesn't execute anything in its block. So it, I put a semicolon. So again you can do something like this if you don't want to execute anything as a part of for loop. So this again is a perfectly valid piece of code which executes properly. So basically for loop expects three expressions in, in, the, in the first section which gets executed once throughout the lifetime of the for loop. In the second expression it keeps executing every time to check whether this is valid. The third is an incremental expression. Again this is an expression you can, you can put anything here. If you don't increment i in this example you can print again do a printf here if you do that this becomes an infinite loop because i will never be less than uh, i will always be less than 10 so this for loop get keeps getting incremented so you have to have a place to increment i so you can do this here or you could have done it as a body of the for loop as well so this is a brief introduction to for loop uh, thanks for watching the video